Hello Rover Janglers, welcome to another Rover Jangler video. Look at these floats. These were sent to me by RJ Floats, if you hadn't guessed. RJ Floats stands for Ryan Jordan Floats. Ryan Jordan is the man that makes these floats, designs these floats. It's all his little business and he's set up on Facebook, as you can see at the bottom there. You can find him on Facebook if you're interested. And these are one of his ranges that he does and they are called TR Edition. Now the TR Edition stands for Tony Rickson Edition. And that is because these are floats that were designed by Tony Rickson and Ryan has produced them for him. Tony Rickson, if you don't know who he is, is a bit of a legend down here in the south, in the southwest Somerset area. And he's been fishing in the open match scene for a long, long time. And he's a very tough man to be. Now he's designed these floats for fishing up against steep slopes and canal lake and like pegs where perhaps the bottom doesn't plumb up so well. And so, you know, let's go into the details of what these floats do and why Tony's designed the way that they do. And see if it's something that you might be interested in. Right then. Here's one of the here's one of the floats, the green top one. And as you can see, I've got the wrong way around, but we're doing inches. They're about three and a half inches long, these floats, which is about 90 mil for those that, are, that care about millimetres. So why is that important? Well, that's quite short for a float. That's a little, short little float. And obviously, like I said, we're fishing up against the fire bank margins and we might be in very, very shallow water. So we don't really want the float too long. Also, we might have spooky fish there. So, you know, anything that we can do to minimise the disturbance or impact as an angler at Ravin, then obviously that gives us a better chance of catching them. And a, and a smaller float protrudes less into the water and potentially causes less disturbance. But I think primarily the reason that they're short is, as I've already said, and that is because of um, the depth. Another thing that you want from these sort of floats is durability. So this is the uh, 0.1 size. They come in two sizes. I think there's a 0.2 size. Well, I'll show you that in a second. But they've got, I'm going to try and point it out to you if I can. Here you've got the eye there. And it's got one, it's got an eye, like a, a a strong eye. So the eye goes, oh, just let me just refocus the camera there. Yeah, there we are. So the eye goes around the back. It goes around the back of the stem. So, that, so what you've got is the stem goes up through the body and into the tip. And then the eye's going around the back of that so it can't be pulled out no matter how hard the cart pulls it can't be pulled out that gives you good good durability and also this is a carbon stem here which is going to give you good durability and i think i haven't measured it again but i think it's around about 0.8 mil which is quite thick nice and strong let me get the 0.2 mil so you can see now the two the 0.2 versions that um ryan has sent me let's get it focused They've got the, the hole in so that you can put the line through the body and there's a little tube in there to reinforce it. See there? So what that does is that, again, gives you extra strength uh, and less less chance of this float breaking. You're fishing at the fire banks, you're going to have, you might get dragged through vegetation, etc. So you need the float to be strong. So there's another little feature of these floats that's very important for what they're designed for. Now, as I've already mentioned, these floats only really come in small sizes. And as you can see, this is number number 10's stocks. I just took these on just to see what it would take to cock this float nicely. This is a point 0.1. It seems to take about four number 10 stocks in my little test um, bottle, which may be slightly different in reality because of the size of the bottle causes surface tension, etc. But for the, for the purposes of experimentation, it's fine. So we've put that bulk on there and then that's that so this is quite light considering you're fishing for big fish some people might think you want a big heavy bulk like you do down the margin but that's not always the case when you're fishing tight across like we said you're only fishing in shallow water sometimes you don't want a massive big heavy float fishing in shallow water uh, maybe you want to string it out and have it dropping through the water if you've been catapulting pellets across to the far bank all day maybe you want to like, sort of flick the float in and let it settle in um slowly like one of the loose offerings and you can't do any of those things with the big heavy sort of you know half a gram float or whatever so that's another little factor for these floats they're designed so that um you know they don't take a lot of weight because actually that is a that is a key feature not it's not it's not an oversight it's a key feature for these floats so there we are i've put the float in my little bottle that i've just grabbed out of the kitchen not the not the best of setups i know but i'll put those shots on as i just showed you and you might be able to see that it might not show up very well, but literally the first, say, five mil of that stem is under the water. So we've just got the shotting onto the stem. Now, you might want to shot it a bit lower than that, but this is just for demonstration purposes to demonstrate my point. So that is how you would shot the float, and it would sit like that fine. What if your hook weight was off the bottom? So what I've got on this rig is a little lasso on the end. 
it's showing up there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just put an 8mm pellet into that lasso. So we've now got the 8mm pellet lassoed onto the rig. I'm not bothered with a hook or anything because no point. Just so that that hat acts like it would if it was on a band that way. It's going to affect that. And then all you've got to do, when you lower that down, you'll see what happens straight away. The whole float's gone. So if your hook bait's not on the bottom, it's definitely going to be obvious to know. And this is really important, as we've said, in those sort of swims that you might come across where the bank's really steep. And if your float's half an inch closer to you or two inches closer to you, it's, it makes a big difference. Uh, and often these fish on these on these um, these well-educated fish on, on these venues, they will eat off these ridiculously steep slopes because they know that you can't fish there effectively or that you or you know they've learned not that they don't get hooked there and so by fishing on them and letting the pellet just rest on them um you catch a few fish doing that and this is what this is designed for but also really useful i think in some of these swims where like i said before it plums up like an egg box and you're just not sure and you're constantly second guessing yourself you can just keep lifting and moving the rig around until it's definitely sitting nicely so they're the key features of these floats that we've gone through they are made, like I say again, they're made by Ryan Jordan Floats or RJ Floats as it's, as it's known. Um, I'll put a link to his Facebook page in the description below if you want to ask Ryan to make you any floats. I don't know how much he charges for floats. I'm pretty sure he's very, very reasonable. Very, very competitive price. Um, and if you want some of these floats, you just need to get in touch with Ryan. I've got six floats here and I'm going to be giving four away to channel subscriber. So, like and subscribe to the video, put in the comment RJ Floats. Just type in the comment RJ Floats below, and then you'll go into a random draw, and I'll pick somebody out at random and send them four floats in the post. Thanks for watching, guys.